welcome today as we gather in worship. We gather to rejoice and celebrate in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Announcement this week, we resumed worship on the 13th. The online will continue, and so we're glad that you joined us in this way, in this format. And so we make our beginning today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gospel reading today is from Matthew 18, beginning in verse 21. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Constant in the sea of change. 
this time we profess our faith as we join together through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brethren, we come together to confess our sins before God our Father and to hear the words of forgiveness we have in and through Jesus Christ. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. O Lord God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible foundation of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our sermon text for this morning comes with a letter to the Colossians, beginning in chapter 1, verses 21 through chapter 2, verse 5. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you've heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil and struggle with all the energy that he powerfully inspires within me. For I want you to know how much I am struggling for you. And for those in Laodicea and for all who have not seen me face to face, I want their hearts to be encouraged and united in love so that they may have all the riches of assured understanding and have the knowledge of God's mystery, that is, Christ himself, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I am saying this so that no one may deceive you with plausible arguments, for though I am absent in body, yet I am with you in spirit, 
and I rejoice to see your morale and the firmness of your faith in Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. continuing our look at Paul's letter to the Colossians. As we do so, let's begin with a prayer. Almighty God, today as we turn once more to chapter 1 of Colossians, we hear Paul's words, we're reminded, Lord, of the mark of sin upon our lives. But we're also reminded of that great grace that you pour out upon us. Lord, today as we look at the before and after of sin and, and grace, I pray that you'd bless us. I pray that you'd open our hearts to hear you. And Lord, I pray that you'd use me as your instrument to proclaim this message to your great glory. And in Jesus' name, amen. 4 a.m. last Wednesday. That was the moment when the battery in my smoke detector decided that it needed to be replaced. I don't know about you, and maybe it's just me, but this always seems to happen at the most inconvenient time. And so as I lay in bed listening to the rhythmic chirping, I weighed out my options. One option, of course, was to go to the garage and get the ladder out and remove the smoke detector from the ceiling. The other option, turn the television on loud enough so that it would drown out the sound of the detector and its chirping. I decided to go with the television option, confident that I could sleep through any program that would be on at 4 a.m. As I was scanning through the channels, I thought about all of those home improvement shows that I've seen. 
You know the ones where the goal is to transform someone's home. I wondered about how much time they spent on well, small details, maybe like smoke detectors. But I also thought a lot about those photos they show. You know the ones, the before and the after photos. Homes that had once been, well, complete disaster areas suddenly look new and better than ever. The book of Colossians gives us two pictures of ourselves. The first picture Colossians presents us with is the before. Have you noticed that the words nothing personal but are never followed by anything positive? Let me just give you a few examples. Nothing personal, but that shirt looks terrible on you. How about this one? Nothing personal, but red is not your color. Nothing personal, but you need a nicer car. Or how about this one? Nothing personal, but you need to use more deodorant. Paul wanted the Colossians to know that God's message for them was very personal. Let me share with you again verse 21 of our reading. It says, And you, who were once separated and enemies in your thinking and evil behavior. The word you makes this personal for the Colossians. Paul wanted them to know where they stood on their own apart from God. Paul uses some harsh words to do this. He first tells them they are separated from God. When I think of being separated from God and the idea of that, I can't help but picture a lost child who's separated from a parent and the harsh language doesn't stop there. It continues as Paul calls them enemies in their thinking and in their behavior. In other words, the things they thought and did were, well, they were contrary to God. The word you in this verse isn't meant only for the Colossians, though. It's meant for us, too. Have you ever accidentally locked your keys in your car or lost your house key? If so, you know the agony of being so close but unable to get in because the door is locked. Paul's words here are, are a reminder that on our own we are separated from God and enemies in thought and action. This first picture Colossians presents us with is the before. But the second picture Colossians presents us with is the after. During the pandemic, like many of you, I've been spending a lot of time at home and a lot less time driving around town. Insurance companies have evidently seemed to notice this trend and in many cases have actually lowered insurance rates accordingly. I hope this has happened for you. And so it was with a bit of irony that I had an accident in my driveway. Some workers were at my house and they somehow managed to back their car into mine. I called my insurance to report the accident and they began to ask the typical questions that insurance companies ask in such cases. And they got to one question in particular. They asked, where were you when the accident took place? And I replied with the first thing that popped into my head, which was this. I was somewhere between my bedroom and the family room at the time. 
I at least got a chuckle out of the insurance agent. After getting through the whole insurance process, I took my car with its newly mangled fender to the repair shop and left it with them for the next several days. They called me when the work was done and I arrived and looked and realized, well, it looked better than new. What was broken had been restored and made new again. As I thought about that, I realized that this is like what God is doing with us. Paul says it this way in Colossians, verse 22 of chapter 1. But now he has reconciled you in his body of flesh through death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before God. The key words here are but now. These two simple words transition from who we are apart from God, which is the before picture. And they show us who we are through Jesus, which is the after. And through Jesus, we are made new and restored to God. We are reconciled to God and brought into God's presence through the cross. As I was reflecting on this verse, I immediately pictured the temple in Jerusalem. The temple was the place where God brought the presence of God to the people and where God dwelt in their midst. But there was always a bit of a, a physical barrier between the people and between God. The most notable of these barriers was the curtain that hung in the temple and separated the Holy of Holies from the rest of the temple. The high priest was the only one who could enter that Holy of Holies, go behind that curtain, and even then could only do so once a year. This was the curtain that was notably torn when when Jesus was crucified. The torn curtain is a reminder that God has broken down the dividing wall and made a way for outsiders to come in. Jesus' death means that we who were excluded because of sin are now restored and welcomed into God's presence. May the Lord, who reveals this before and after to us, bless you and keep you today and always. Let's pray. Merciful God, today we rejoice in the before and after. Of course, the before is who we are because of sin, and the after is who we are through the cross of Christ Jesus. Strengthen and keep us in these two images. Remind us that the before points us to our need for our Savior. And remind us as well that that after reveals the good news of Jesus Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need.
You welcome us when we are weak in faith. Uphold your church throughout the world. Make it a place of welcome. Strengthen faith through Bible studies and Sunday schools, confirmation, classes, and youth ministries. Nurture new ministries of education and growth, especially those new starts in our circuit that have braved through this, this new pandemic experience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The heights of the heavens show us the vastness of your steadfast love. Have compassion on your creation, for human selfishness has brought ruin and destruction. We look to you to heal, renew, and redeem your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your ways known to the nations. Speak kindness to our bitter grudges. Settle our hearts when we want to settle accounts with violence. Bless our leaders with patience and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring healing and justice wherever harm is dealt. Provide vindication for all who are oppressed. Free victims of human trafficking and forced labor. Deliver all who are bound by debt. Feed all who hunger and guard refugees fleeing famine, poverty, and war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. Still our tongues when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over options. Make this congregation a community of mercy for one another and for all our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring continued healing and recovery for those who are suffering, unwell, and struggling at this time, including Bob Scuderi, who is struggling with COVID-19. And Lord, for continued recovery for John Zender, and Lord, we thank you that you have brought him home to recover more fully. And Lord, we pray that you continue to strengthen him to bring him back into ministry soon. For Lord, our teachers and students, who are now in their first and second weeks of school, that you will continue to protect, guide, and strengthen them. For those that are battling wildfires in the West, that you will protect the EMTs and firefighters, and that you will bring people back to their homes and provide safety and recovery. For those in the midst of hurricane cleanup, Lord, that you will continue to strengthen those communities and provide quick relief. Lord, all these things we pray in your mercy hear our prayer. Whether we live or whether we die, we are yours. We thank you for those who have showed us faithfulness, for the knees that taught us how to bow to you and the tongues that taught us to praise you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, above me. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.